Great. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to hit live on the webinar and then on the live stream. All right. Broadcast start. Go live start. And then let's see. We have okay. so I'm going to I'm going to hit live on and I need okay. That thing un unmuted itself. <laughs> okay. Live stream. That's going to be the end of my echo. All right. Start. <laughs> Oh, I had to mute it in two different places. My mistake. So here we go. We're going to start an event. Hi, everybody. We're going to start an event with my mistakes. We did some tests, but sometimes <laughs> things happen and it will get edited out of the recording. So oh, yeah. will, we'll know. So hi, Mark Raven here. We're doing a quick sound check and we'll start formally in a second. Elizabeth Swan is uh, here as my friend and guest host, you want to say something real quick? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm psyched to be here with Mark, and um, I'm really happy that we started off with a mistake. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it won't be the last, I'm sure. No. Um, while we're waiting, like, people are coming in here. Put in the chat where you're from. Oh, my gosh, Nigeria. Whoa. Boy, yeah. Hello. Um, I see Sam Morgan. I see Stephanie Hill, who is probably in Ohio. We won't oh, spend yeah. She's in Ohio. Um, but right. not, um, and there's a lag between talking and the comments coming through. So I will we'll we'll get started formally in a second. It seems pretty clear that okay, here we go. The sound is working. I think we're good. We've got Vancouver, Washington, Florida, Austin, Texas, Minneapolis, Lancaster, PA, Atlanta. Cool. So keep putting that in. I'll, I'll go back and read through that later. And um, okay. With that, Elizabeth, let me hand it to you. Like this is like formal. All right. Here. Three, formal. two, one. And uh, welcome everyone to the book cover reveal event. Um, if you have no idea or uh, for somehow misknowing Mark Graben, he is the host of many podcasts, including My Favorite Mistake. And he's the author of many books, including the upcoming The Mistakes That Make Us, Cultivating a Culture of Learning and Innovation. Uh, and I am quite psyched to be here with Mark. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah. And uh, if you guys want to hear about when the, the book is coming out in June, Mark's book is mm -hmm. coming out in June, if you would like to uh, get updates, you can either hit the QR code here or you can go to mistakesbook.com. So choose your method of staying in touch and finding out when the book comes out. And um, I think for probably a bunch of reasons, but Mark invited me because we've been on kind of a, a parallel mm -hmm. book journey. Exactly. And um, we're revealing Mark's book cover today, but my book cover is already revealed. So there's it's a great cover. <laughs> um, picture yourself a leader, uh, which came out last month. And uh, so Mark's uh, Mark's right on my heels. And uh, I think doing a very fun thing, which was the cover reveal and making me wish I could go back in time uh, and do my own <laughs> cover reveal. But um, this was a great one, Mark. Well, thanks. Thanks, Elizabeth. And yeah, I have you here. Congratulations on your book, Picture Yourself a Leader. Um, I, I thank you for letting me preview it. I was happy to do an endorsement for the book. I know it's off to a great start in terms of uh, people buying it and reading it and reviewing it. So I encourage everyone, please do um, check out Elizabeth's book. Yeah, there's a blurb on the back. My, my, my oh so creative picture yourself, a reader of this book. I hope I hope people will. It was mic drop. It was mic drop worthy. I went on my back cover. <laughs> um, but Elizabeth and I, you know, we're going to um, talk about um, the cover and we're going to go through some of the iteration of how the cover came to be, quote unquote, final. But we're, we're, Elizabeth and I are also going to talk, uh, as we have time here, about iteration with writing, editing, books, covers. We're just going to kind of riff on some of those um, issues, talk about iteration and improvement in other elements, uh, aspects of work. And we, we might be able to take some questions and, and talk. So I think we're going to go about 30 minutes, but we'll see how that goes. So I want to thank everybody uh, for being here. And again, if you'd like to learn more, mistakesbook.com is where you can go and do that. So we've got, 
we should move ahead, Elizabeth. Am I still kind yeah. of on script? You're on script. You're as on script as we can keep you, Mark. So rock and roll. Please help keep me on script because I know you have the script handy. I don't have it on one of my screens here. So please uh, keep me honest here today. So not to belabor getting to the cover, but I wanted to share first for context, not the covers, um, some just brainstorming and ideation. You know, um, I'm going to talk about who did uh, work with me to, to iterate and collaborate on the cover design. But there are different ways of trying to um, create a cover um, and just to try to think through things. So I, at some point, I needed a placeholder cover. Uh, people do judge a book by the cover. This is nowhere near as good as what we ended up with. So I hope people didn't judge um, too much or too badly. For a while, I was using an image like this. Look, I'm not a graphic designer. I just played with this in Canva, trying to have a little fun with like, oops, some of the text is going um, off the edge of the page. I was using something like this as a placeholder for a while, but um, I don't know, Elizabeth, uh, if you can speak on behalf of the audience, it's probably good that I got a professional involved, right? Yeah, but I was impressed when you were using a placeholder, right? I thought, oh, I should have done that, right? Because I kept thinking, well, I can't put anything up there until it's like close, but this was like, hey, you acknowledge it's just a placeholder. Yeah, so I tried to clearly label it as such. And for a while, like before I even had a title, I, it was like, you know, unnamed mistakes book project. I don't did <laughs> like, did you lock in on a title for picture yourself a leader pretty quick? No, that took a while. That was a few iterations. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to try to share previews of something that doesn't even have a title yet. Yeah, and you don't want that to get lodged in people's minds. So I think the fact that you constantly put a warning like, this is not the cover. <laughs> this is not, and before right. that, probably, this is not the title. Right. Yeah, Unti hopefully untitled book about mistakes was uh, clearly. <laughs> I, should, I could have said placeholder title for book about uh, mistakes. But then, you know, I did when I went out, um, what a lot of people do. And, you know, my, my previous book, My uh, Measures of Success, my mistake for anyone who's keeping count, I'm going to uh, let that go. Um, measures of success, I went out and um, like through Fiverr, you know, you can pay people to come up with concepts and then pay them to refine it and iterate and build upon a cover and make sure that, you know, any image is properly licensed. And like, I think you can get good results from working with uh, Fiverr or other online, like I think one's called 99designs where people are kind of competing. So, you know, people on Canva came up with interesting designs when I told them it's a book about improvement. Let's have something on the cover that reflects that. You know, I thought this was kind of a fun treatment. You know, it's a stock photo of failed attempts to, to hammer in um, the nails. Um, a different author came up with, or I think it was the same artist, came up with a different concept involving um, a trash can and uh, wadded up paper balls. But I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, and then, you know, here's another one where, okay, hammering down the word mistake and it's shattering. I mean, like there's some fun stuff here, but I'm happy that I was able to collaborate uh, with an old friend of mine um, going back to like, gosh, when I was in the third grade and he was in the fourth grade, uh, my friend Don Kuhn, who is a, a professional artist. He's not normally, like he's working on stuff normally far more important than my little book here, but he's a great friend. We've kept in touch. Um well into adulthood here. And, and he volunteered like, hey, this would be a fun thing to work on together. You know, he, this is, I think the one, this is the, the first book cover um, he's designed. So I think it was kind of an interesting challenge of like really starting from a pretty blank slate of talking about the book and the podcast. And, and Don had actually designed, I should have put it in the slide. Um, he did the cover for my podcast, My Favorite Mistake. And you know, so I asked him to do something that sort of evoked that design without feeling the need to totally duplicate it. Mm. Um, for a bunch of reasons, I decided to go with the mistakes that make us as the title for the book instead of calling it, you know, my favorite mistake, the book or something like that. So, you know, Don is an artist. It was fascinating to see how he took this input from some discussions and some emails to do what artists often do, which is pencil sketches. So Elizabeth, you have a background in improv. I don't, I don't know if you see parallels here of like, at some point, just throwing out different concepts, like 20 different concepts to see 
what grabs you, right? He was doing a little bit of drawing improv, maybe. I think that it's drawing improv and also, I mean, I'm assuming that that pencil means this is all in pencil. And I, I really like that approach, you know, because obviously you're messing with stuff, right? This is mm-hmm. like, you know, you're experimenting, it's pencil. Um, but yeah, and I, I love that it's like how many different takes on this. Yeah. How fun and how just these are, I'm assuming that's one page, so they're tiny. Sure. Yeah. And it's very conceptual. And 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 I should have also commented, you know, your book, um, I'll, I'll plug Elizabeth's book again, Picture Yourself a Leader. <laughs> she draws, right? Right there, that lot, Lots of, you know, are, are you doing that in pencil? When you're doing yeah, sketches? Yeah, initially it's pencil. Yeah. So we initially. can... Uh, make mistakes and use our eraser, not just the pencil end. So, you know, Don and I went through these different concepts and, and I got input from some other people um, in no particular order. Uh, well, I'll say first my wife, then my book coach. I almost said book mm-hmm. coach first. Uh, my editor um, who I've been working with. And I'll send me a comment here in the uh, the chat. Pencils with no erasers are better. That's that's living life on the edge. <laughs> you might as well be using a Sharpie, I guess, if that's the case. But I mean, we, we could have a standalone eraser, uh, eraser there. But so we went through and we picked out a few that we wanted to take a little bit deeper dive into. Um, so we kind of had these six, if you will, finalists, but we weren't locked in, right? This was still a starting point to brainstorm and, and, and talk about pros and cons of different sketches. Like you can see Don was doing some creative stuff here of trying to incorporate in lieu of a traditional author photo, since my podcast logo has a drawing or draw a stylized version of a photograph of me, we could use the podcast logo as the author photo and a way of kind of cross promoting the, uh, the podcast. It should it go on the front, should it go on the back. And then, you know, you can see the, the different elements here of like pencils or wadded up crumbles of paper, wads of paper is probably the, I I should learn this. That's the technical term. (laughs) It is technical. So get with it. (laughs) So this is, you know, this is how it sort of evolved. And then we actually decided on one of these now is pretty close and it evolved. I'm going to show some of the evolution here of, you know, first off uh, what we're calling the final, as, as final as anything is Kindle cover which is basically just a front cover. And then I'm going to show the paperback cover, which is, of course, then, I mean, I think people still remember what a a paper book is. We still have a lot of paper book readers, Um, the spine and and the back of the book. But first off, here is, I I didn't think, like a da-da-da-da, I I can't (laughs) sing. It's terrible. Can you give me a fun? Um, We're going to give you a drum roll. Drum roll. Um, Yeah. Ta-da! Ta-da! There is the front cover for the mistakes that make us cultivating a culture of learning and innovation. There's the the front cover, and I would I, I kind of scooped myself in a way because the book has been uh, available in sort of semi stealth mode um, for pre order on Amazon. Um, so there's a link to that pre order at mistakesbook.com, or you can. Um, find find that, um, I think, by searching on Amazon. So there's a couple comments here. Hey, Deandra, she says, uh, the book's fabulous. Hey, Clint, looks awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff going on here. Um, the paper wads, um, the pencil, sort of like this blue pencil here, um, the coffee stain ring. And, and one other thing I'll point out, like Don, you know, I, I thought this was great the way he did this. Like this is not digital anything. Like this was him taking a photograph. I think he had his camera kind of rigged up, pointing down vertically to the stuff that was sitting on a black um, tabletop. Um, and and Steve Martin put a comment in. Not that Steve Martin. Um, Love the wrinkle page. Embrace your mistakes. So yes, that's definitely part of the theme that we we're going for here. Um, embracing mistakes. I mean, it's a book. I think with some serious topics, but trying to do some of it in a lighthearted way. Like it's not a joke filled book or anything, but, you know, trying to have some fun with it. And, you know, I think the book cover tries to reflect some of that. So hopefully that comes through. 
Here's a here's a quick question for you, Mark, on mistakes. Yeah. Are you seeing any other chats come through? Um, we've got a participant concerned that uh, they only, they don't see chats coming through and they thought there were. Um, I see, no, I think it's set where people who are in Zoom should be able to chat to everyone. I see comments coming through in LinkedIn, which is what I'm monitoring. So um, yeah, there's a question from uh, Claudio. How do I order? Um, you can pre-order the Kindle right now. The paperback and hardcover are not yet available for uh, pre-order, but you can pre-order the Kindle book right now if you want at Amazon. Um, there's the, the QR code and the website website there. Comment from Kay Smith. Love that it's crumpled. Uh, it looks as if more thought went into it. Final result is awesome. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, Kay. But I'm going to pull up. Um, so there is the pencil sketch for comparison. We chose you know, what was labeled as number four in the list of, um, of concepts there. Um, so yeah, it sort of changed. It kind of evolved a little bit, but that, that was the general, the general concept. So I'm curious, Elizabeth, any, any of your reactions or, or observations? Around? Well, I'm just impressed with your designer. Like this is clearly someone with superior talent. I mean, I you know go I go back and forth between calling what I do drawing and doodling, and I'm looking and he's able to get such an incredible 3D rendering mm -hmm. in, you know, a postage stamp. So yeah. I just feel like, you know, that's a really cool way to go. Is someone who's like you said that's the first book design he's ever done, but wow. <laughs> well, I mean, wow is right. I mean, you know, to be fair to, to you, Elizabeth, Don is a professional. You know, professional artist, graphic designer. You know, so. But um, I, I was so thrilled to be able to have him um, uh, do this, and then you know we talk through some of the iteration here. I mean, I think you see, like clearly, he's the artist, but we have a good enough relationship where there were a lot of ideas bandied about, and he was really open to input and um, ideas, and he had his own ideas, of course. So. You know, I think it goes to show sometimes collaboration is better when you have a good relationship and there's trust. And if I could, you know, if I threw out some idea he thought was terrible or vice versa, we could talk through those things and it was okay. And that's really critical because design, and I remember feeling that way because I didn't have that kind of relationship with my designer mm -hmm. and you're the concern with hurting someone's feelings, mm -hmm. right? Someone's mm -hmm. artwork is personal. Like they've mm -hmm. put a piece of them into this image for you about you, you know, and your yeah. book trying to take in what you've created and, and imagine mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And to say, I'm not, you know, how many ways do you say, and how do you say that's not really working for me? Or, you know, I was trained in, ter in terms of my own sense of tact and decorum mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. what I like about that is, but but that also forced me to say, what do you like about it? Do you like the font? Oh, like what, right. What do you like? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, there, there's long, I mean, it's decades, 40 year relationship and friendship. But I mean, I think, you know, there's, and this is one theme that I touch on a lot in the book, um, psychological safety. Like I felt like we had, yeah. and I tried to really reestablish, um, you know, when I was making suggestions like, hey, you know, uh, Don, if that's a terrible idea, and I was more likely to have a terrible idea in this, like, t please, please tell me, like, I'm not dictating anything here. You know, I'm, I'm not, quote, unquote, the customer, in a sense that I'm going to tell you how to do your job. It was a really nice collaboration with him. Yeah, no, that's great. That's wonderful. I'm going to, I'm going to correct you on something that oh. you made a mistake. Oh, so what, what, you what said, mistake? well, you said, he's a professional, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, now that I put illustrations in a book and people have bought that <laughs> yes. book, I'm a professional. Yes. I'm not sure what. <laughs> you work. are now a professional book <laughs> illustrator. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a professional book illustrator. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, there's a question here from um, Shante. How long did the process take? It took months to iterate on my logo with my designer and that surprised me. Um, yeah, I, gosh, I have to go back and look at the dates, but it was a couple of months and, and it wasn't nonstop back and forth because again, Don was doing this sort of as a favor, um, you know, in his free time and we're busy, but it, it did like over at least two months where that process went on. So on that note, I want to show some of the, the iteration in the yeah. process that we went through. So first off, I want to reveal um, the full, paperback cover. 
Um, and a question here from uh, from Ed, real quick. Um, what what are a few things you want to want people to take away from the book? Let me. I'm going to jot that down. Let's make sure we come back to that. But one is at a high level that we're, we're going to be more successful if we can create a culture of learning from mistakes as individuals and as teams and as a company, shifting from you know a, a, a punishment oriented response to one that's that's more constructive, right? Trying to prevent mistakes. So there's stuff in the book about mistake proofing and, and other techniques we can use, but then realizing, look, things are always changing. We're human. We're going to learn or invent new mistakes to make. And let's react to those constructively and learn from them and try to cycle back and ask, well, how can we prevent that mistake from being repeated? So that's probably the high level main point. Mm. All right, so now this is the front cover for the paperback. And I, I'm, for now, I'm just showing the spine of the book. Um, kind of a, a tease of a reveal here, but, uh, and Sam, yes, I will be doing an audio book. Thank you for, for that question. Um, so you can start to see how the cover concept wraps around the paperback. Like this is something you can't get with a Kindle book where the paper and even the coffee stain ring is wrapping around the spine of the book. And now here it is going into the back cover where we've got now, um, okay, there's that then another paper wad that's kind of wrapping around to the spine. We've got the podcast logo um, it, being used as the author photo and a little bit of cross promotion to um, the podcast. And then I think this will get through the book approval process. So you always have to leave a rectangle for the, the UPC code, the barcode. And you can see how he incorporated that into a piece of paper. Like, I think that's okay because there, as we submit it, there will be a blank white box that will be the, the, the space for the UPC code. So I hope that's not, I'm going to say it, sorry, not too outside the box for the mm. people who have to approve the cover before printing. It should be okay, I hope. Yeah. No, I feel like one thing that feels just like fun about this is that just drifting into the spine and over, right over to the back cover, kind of the, the porous nature of the whole mm -hmm. wrapper. Yeah. And I, ha I will confess to you that I so enjoyed that um, sort of slipping around, not, yeah. not feeling confined by that cover that yeah. I got my um, designer to let mine drift at least into the spine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope it's not a mistake. I hope I don't regret someday. I'm going to look at a, a shelf and I'm going to see the coffee stain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think uh, it's fun. I think it's fun. No. So that is the full blown cover. And I'm, I'm going to announce a couple giveaway winners uh, real quick, whether they're attending live here uh, or not. I know how to follow up with people about this, but you can see here some eraser marks. I think I pointed out this out to you, Elizabeth, when we were doing prep there. We didn't want to overdo it with the eraser marks, but in my last name there, there's some eraser marks. And I'm going to zoom in because this is a direct extension of what Don did with uh, the podcast oh, yeah. logo and cover. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here. So uh, where, where it says Graben, you can see there, you know, there are eraser marks and um, you can see behind it. It's a, it said Garban. <laughs> now that's a mistake that people might make. Usually the mistake people make is to spell my name B E N. Instead of B-A-N, my wife says my family makes the mistake of saying, we, we either say it or spell it wrong, but there we go, Graven. But Garban is very much an inside joke. I remember Don and I, um, we were from the same hometown, went to school together. We had a high school government class where for the entire semester, it seemed, the teacher was always calling me Mark Garban. <laughs> had this old, deep, resonant voice, Garban. And so, okay, that that's why the mistake is Garban and not Mark with a C instead of Mark with a K. So that's did our he, little inside joke. Did he mean that to sting or was it just he just I never got your name right? I think he just never got it right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can only try to correct somebody so much. I don't know. Maybe he was teaching. He was trying to teach me a lesson. He was testing me. 
Don't don't get too uh, con- <laughs> attached to your name. Right. Don't think. Don't get too full of yourself as a high school junior. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? Yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten a lot of that. Who do you think you are? <laughs> I'd like to think that. So I'm going to talk about and show some of the iteration that we went through. And again, thank you to everybody. Um, who came today. I'm going to be giving away two signed copies. I'm going to reach out to people to get your mailing addresses, and I will send those out from amongst the first copies that uh, I get my hands on uh, next month, I think here in June. Um, So I chose a giveaway winner from the people who registered um, on LinkedIn, uh, Deborah Ruckert. So congratulations uh, to Deborah, randomly selected as the winner from the LinkedIn pool. And then from the people who registered for the Zoom webinar version, drum roll, please. I'm a drummer, but you did a better <laughs> verbal drum roll, Elizabeth. <laughs> who is it? No, Tom Gormley. Who, oh, yeah. Go, Tom. Yep. So thank you, uh, everybody who registered and everyone who attended today. And I'm also going to throw in with the books, you know, it's kind of fun to put together, I don't know, if you will, um, swag. Um, so there's, uh, uh, I'm going to send out a coffee mug that's got both the podcast logo, my favorite mistake, and the book cover on there. And then I, I thought in keeping with the theme, and I think next time I'm going to do the pink erasers, but these are uh, erasers, custom erasers with the book cover and a little bit of information there um, about the book. I like the white. I would say stick with the white. Yeah. But I like the pink eraser marks that are left though. Oh, the that's true. Eraser. So I... Maybe I, I can I can get some of both at the uh, so we have options. So um, again, last time I think that I'll mention this at least for a while. Uh, the Kindle version of the book, The Mistakes That Make Us, is available now for pre-order um, on Amazon. You could go and search my name. You can go search The Mistakes That Make Us. There's a, a QR code here that I'll leave up on screen uh, for a second. So a couple of comments here on. Um, uh, yeah, the coffee mark gives the book a vintage look. Yeah, maybe well worn, and the owner of it, oops, uh, put their coffee down. Um, it carries carries the spirit um, graphically, pulls them together with a light touch. Thank you, Joe. That's um, that's what we're going for. But then, um, Kay, I love your comment here. Among uh, she says, "My mistakes are who I am. Mm, the yeah. mistakes that make us." That's very her comments. Very evocative of um, the title, um, Steve. Steve Martin, not that Steve Martin, um, asked a question here. Audio book with bloopers, I hope. Um, I can do something with the bloopers. I can put them out in a podcast episode. That's good. Just like a movie trailer, right? Have them at the yeah. end. Like, here's all the bloopers. <laughs> yeah. I'll help you with those if you need a little improv. All right. Yeah. Uh, release date of the paperback. Um, thanks for asking, Sam. The, 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 more, the most specific I can be right now is June. Um, I think it's going to be early to mid-June, but as every week goes on, the company that's now doing the page layout for the book, as that progresses along, I'm going to get better and better estimates. I feel like when like software designers hate being asked for estimates and dates and like, yeah. have a general idea, um, but it, I'm pretty certain it'll be uh, in June. The company I'm working with on the book design, copy editing, proofreading, I'll give a shout out to them. 1106 Design, based in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, Michelle DeFilippo and her team, they did the work with me on uh, Measures of Success, my previous book, and it's a satisfied customer and repeat business for them. They're great to work with. They they do uh, great work. And then I will mention, if you're disappointed that you didn't win today's giveaway, uh, I'm going to do a new giveaway uh, that's out on the web right now. Um, We'll leave this barcode, uh, QR code up for uh, a minute and... um, I'll share this on LinkedIn and uh, in follow-ups with people. We're going to do a new book giveaway that's open through uh, May 12th. So you can enter. One of the ways you can gain more entries is helping share about the contest on social media. So I'll ask people, um, you know, hopefully that's win-win if you if you don't mind um, sharing a little bit about the book contest that gets you more entries um, to be one of the winners of those books that we're giving away. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, it's about two o'clock, but I mean, yeah, let's go a little bit and, and, and talk about iteration. I'm going to flip through some of this pretty quickly, and then we can see if there are any other questions or iteration talk that you would want to go through, Elizabeth. So iteration on the design. This is the first um, mock-up of the front cover that Don did is kind of like fully realized, oh, this, this is working toward 
what the real cover would be. You know, it's either a bunch of design decisions here, like where, where to put the subtitle, um, where to leave space for uh, a blurb or a partial blurb on the front cover. We had a question around, actually, I raised the question and it turned out, I think I was wrong. Um, you know, black as the background versus making it look more gray. Um, I think we decided that, no, it just sort of, if you will, pops better on top of the black. And, you know, it's a kind of a classic business book cover has traditionally been lighter colors, you know, white, mm -hmm. cream, things in that range. But uh, there's more and more books, you know, people I've interviewed on the podcast and other books I've seen, more books that have black or dark blue covers. So I don't think I'm completely bucking the norm for what's considered good for a book cover. So there were, there was some of those decisions to think through. I see you thinking, Elizabeth, what do you? Yeah. Well, one thing that strikes me, that? what strikes me is the, um, you know, being asymmetrical mm -hmm. and I find something really appealing about that. And I would say that most books are mm -hmm. business books are symmetrical mm -hmm. uh, and centered and, uh, I, I'm attracted to something that's got, to me, this has motion, like, you know, it's both kind of the, it's off kilter and on account of mistakes, but I think also it, it has kind of forward motion because of the angle that mm. it's at, which I like. Um, yeah. I also really like the Derek Smalls quote, life is one big mistake. <laughs> but, and and so Don and I uh, being uh, old friends are both fans, a huge uh, fan doesn't even describe it. Our favorite movie is the film This Is Spinal Tap. And we, I first watched it with Don. He had a VHS tape copy when we were back uh, in high school. So some of the placeholder quotes are, are related to um, the movie This Is Spinal Tap. You know, um, as we're going through different design decisions or ideas, and, and my book editor, Tom Ehrenfeld, is also a huge fan of the movie, as it turns out. Um, there's a line in the movie that's a couple of the, the, the band members of this fictional mockumentary band. Um, the, the line is, it's a fine line between stupid and clever. <laughs> so we're making our best prediction here, right? We can get feedback from people about whether some of these, um, you know, kind of, you know, design decisions that are not quite the norm. I think it's clever. I, I think, I don't think we're making a mistake, but you know, <laughs> Fine line sometimes between um, stupid and clever. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, this is the other thing that I remember. Uh, kind of, where do you go with mistake and and kind of nuanced mm -hmm. aspect of it? Like how fine a point do you put on? And I kind of feel like the hammer was hammering the point home, yeah. right? And this yeah. one feels like it's got a little more subtlety to it. And I remember early iteration was, you know, picture yourself a leader, a frame in the middle centered. And it was like, this just feels too much like the hammer. Mm. So I yeah. Kind of, and then you ended up with that roll of film. Yeah. And back to that. across your cover. And going angled up like yours is, like kind mm. of having that yes. motion to it, which I like. Yeah. So you can see some of the evolution here. Um, the subtitle text got moved down. It was made a little bit uh, bigger. Um, I had the idea, the question about like, you know, we've got that space where the pencil had been, you know, going from uh, here to here. I'm like, is it stupid or clever to put a coffee stain ring <laughs> in that space as a different mistake? So I had sent Don... Uh, a My Favorite Mistake coffee mug. And again, like there's no digital manipulation here. He he used, this is getting kind of meta. This is really <laughs> getting into the weeds that people might not care about my mistake. But he used the coffee mug to, to then create the stain. I forget what he used. It's not chocolate. It wasn't chocolate pudding. Or it wasn't coffee. I, maybe it was a more of a viscous hot chocolate mixture. That might be what it was. So we started playing with that. Like, well, what if we did um, the coffee stain? We started playing around with, again, Don had this idea, we're going to let it wrap around the spine and the back cover. Um, so it's kind of taking some form like that and kind of evolving a little more closer to what we ended up going with here. But then you notice we had, or I, I raised the idea 
of, okay, we've got the crumpled balls of paper. We've got this flat sheet of paper. I asked Don what he thought of, well, what if that paper was crumpled and smoothed out? So I said, all we can do is try it. Let's see how it looks. So here's the flat paper version. Oh gosh, my mistake. And then here is uh, the crumpled paper version. And again, like, I, I don't think you could do this digitally. It might require some AI fancy graphics tool. Like that, that's literally a piece of, you know, you printed it on a piece of paper and then photographed it so that the crinkle in the text matches the crinkle of the paper. It's funny because the, the crinkles are clearly 3D, the crumpled up wads, mm -hmm. te technical term. Um, but the right. paper being <laughs> crumpled and flattened kind of gives it movement. Mm -hmm. It's different and it gives it so much more depth. That's an interesting yeah. change up. And, and hopefully nobody says like, oh, that's hard to read. I think it still comes through uh, clearly enough. Yeah, but you also are drawn in like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's different. So, you know, even if it takes you another beat to read, you want to. Yeah, which is good. so it's going to catch people's attention, hopefully, and, and hopefully do so um, in a good way. Mm. Um, so we decided to go with the crumpled. And then uh, it evolved um, to this. And then, you know, the final version is slightly different. So there are these different variables of so playing around with like what text um, on the back cover, um, where was the blurb or blurbs going to go. Um, so that that's when I say final with a question mark, like, I mean, we can, we can keep iterating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like. I like Karen. Uh, Karen's got a mic drop quote there. It would be a mistake not to read this book. Yeah. Th thank you for the blurb uh, with that, Karen. And then oh, here's the behind the scenes photo I was going to show of Don creating um, the custom coffee stain. There we go. Custom coffee stain. That's great. Yeah. Um, so maybe let's you know, as long as people are willing to um, hang around. Um, we can chat. There's a couple questions and things in the chat. I'm going to scroll back through the LinkedIn and Elizabeth, tell me if there's anything in the Zoom chat that you think we can or should talk through. Um, just Alan really liked the uh, the wadded up papers and eraser. Uh, Thank in you. The chat. Uh, people not having noticed the Spinal Tap quote until we pointed it out, um, and the and Kathy likes the. Idea of the audio version with bloopers. So now you're going to have to deliver on that. <laughs> well, I've got this wonderful out though, because I swear every book ever printed, even with all the copy editing rounds and the proofreading, books still get published with mistakes. And I can sort of play it off. It's like, well, of course, a book about mistakes is going to have a mistake. Um, you know, I can offer a bounty okay. for finding the mistakes or just, just coming to accept. I mean, look, I'm working with great partners in bringing this book. Uh, to life, but nobody's perfect. Um, you know, I, uh, uh, Jeffrey Liker's book, The Toyota Way, had a typo on page one, and that was a book done through a major publisher. You know, and I'm doing this as quote unquote self publishing, which is a mistake to use that term because, like you, Elizabeth, I mean, you you can put together a team of people who are oh, working yeah. in partnership with you um, to bring a book uh, to life. So it's more like my company is the publisher as opposed to self-publishing. Right. Um, one of the first mistakes pointed out to me in my book was uh, Karen Martin's. She has a blurb at the beginning and she, we had her book as clarify first. Oh. So the word, the word did it, clarity. <laughs> did it go to print with that? You mean? Yes. And it was because the people doing the layout sometimes typed uh, things in as opposed to just flowing it like they right. had because of formatting they were like well I'll just type it in and I caught two other ones where they had typed in the wrong uh, titles and I was like oh no <laughs> but even then clarity versus clarify that's not something spell check is going to catch because clarify is a real word grammar check a grammarly or a tool like that I would suggest she write that as her next book just to clarify. make give me less things to fix in my next thing yeah to clarify um yeah karen's book uh clarity first and the outstanding organization and and other books by karen are, are ones i highly recommend um 
first edition of my first book, Lean Hospitals, that was done through a publisher, had a typo on page one. Page <laughs> like, one. I could understand. I mean, look, we're all human. I could understand where like fatigue kicks in. And if you're proofreading for a long while, your attention is 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 going to go. But boy, page one. <laughs> I know. So um, bad. But I was also told that the book design software, do, you know, like when they go, get to the point of layout, does not have spell check built in. No. So new errors could get introduced that were not in the manuscript. And that's something that was frustrating to learn. Yeah. Bad. Bad. Yeah. But but happens. And uh, I I think everyone probably warned you and you've seen it. That doesn't matter what you do. There's going to be typos. Right. And so there's an opportunity for me to try to get better and to practice what I preach and what's in the book about reacting um, kindly when mistakes occur. And I'll thank my friend Karen Ross, um, author of books, including uh, The Kind Leader, um, for really helping me understand the difference between nice and kind. Like, you know, a kind reaction to a mistake helps somebody improve. Or sometimes if we're trying to be nice, you know, I might say, well, Elizabeth, there's a mistake there, but I don't want you to feel bad. So I'm not going to bring it up like that. That's that's not really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't bless your heart. Me. Just give me <laughs> give me the information. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Steve uh, asked another question. Do the mugs have any cracks or leaks? Um, I'm going to write a blog post about this. I had a I had a big problem with coffee mugs from the vendor shipping to me and arriving about 40 percent broken. <laughs> Oh man! And I went through, and they always refunded me and sent replacements. But it got to be such a hassle, I switched to vendors. Like, yeah, after two cycles of that, you're like, so this I learned is not from a, my mistake. If you not will. a fluke. Um. So, so a, a comment from K: uh, Not errors, mistakes. Mistakes are human. Errors are computers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm using the word mistakes. For a number of reasons. Again, the podcast was my favorite mistake, thanks to inspiration from the Cheryl Crow song, My Favorite yeah. Mistake. Yeah. But I, in a way, like naming the podcast that was terrible for, for search engine result purposes. Yeah, that's that's something you don't think about. Like my name, Elizabeth Swan, was with the title character, Karen Knightley, or one of the title characters in Pirates of the Caribbean. So if you Google me, it's Karen Knightley and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. So yeah. But I think you're probably at some point going to overtake that song. No. But, I mean, again, it comes back to the question of it's a fine line between stupid and clever. Like, it was a clever, uh, that's a good phrase, but I didn't think about um, SEO. If I had called the podcast our favorite mistakes, maybe, I mean, like, it would just, I don't know. Maybe it stood out better in search. I don't know. Well, you could rename it. I know a good title of a book that you could use. <laughs> so I don't know. These PDSA cycles of life of plan, do, study, adjust. So, okay. So we've gone to about 45 minutes here. People are posting comments. Thank you. They're having to jump off. Um, I, I understand. So I think we've gotten to the questions or comments. I'm going to do more. Um, I know people ask questions about the content of the book. We'll we'll get into that, um, you know, in, in future I'm going to do some other videos and, and, and ways of sharing more uh, about the content. But um, they say don't judge a book by its cover. But again, I'll give Don a lot of credit. My friend Don Kuhn, I, I think he did amazing work here on the cover. And, and I hope people will judge the book positively yeah. based on the great work there. And I appreciate, again, the, the collaboration and the iteration. Well done, Mark. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, and, and you know, thank you for for hosting and 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 being part of this here today. Um, fun being able to talk through this with you live. Um, thank you to the people in the chat, but appreciate that we can have some of this back and forth and and sharing. And I'll mention her book again: "Picture Yourself a Leader" by Elizabeth Swan. Thank you. You gonna hold it up again? You still have the book there. I almost did, but I Your felt mistake. like a bad. Please do. No, there you go. I'm inviting it. There you go. We have there the you psychological go. You safety go. to hold up your book. It's quite Done. Our... Okay. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for um, attending. Really appreciate it, and hope everyone has a great day. Thanks.